uh, form part of what, what we want you to submit for your e-portfolio assessment. And then we conclude our uh, 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 lesson. Um, so uh, during our previous discussion, uh, when we were talking about uh, this particular thematic area in institutional governance, we made a mention of the fact that um, it is good to understand the legal and policy pr framework provisions uh, for junior school. And um, I remember very clearly our discussion of the legal and policy framework uh, basically took some the approach of um, a discussion where we have to look at the uh, policy provisions, even from um, uh, a global perspective. And that is why we talked about the final approach and the final approach is where we look at the 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 the, 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 the legal and policy frameworks so, uh, uh, in the provision of education from the global perspective, from the regional perspective, and then from the national perspective. We look at the legislation that guide us in the provision of education uh, uh, in our country, uh, regionally, and uh, uh, globally. What we call um, a global uh, a final approach towards. Uh, a discussion of the legal and policy provisions. So ideally, uh, we discussed issues to do with the sustainable development goal, number four, uh, which ideally talks about the provision of quality and inclusive education. Uh, we talked about uh, legal and policy provisions at the regional level, like uh, Agenda 2063, whose main focus is about the provision of education um, uh, that will meet this, um, the threshold of um, science, technology, and innovation. Uh, ideally, when you look at the national uh, provisions, legal provisions, we realize that uh, education, one, is actually a right for all persons. And there are quite a number of le legislations, policies, and guidelines that, of course, we have to follow as a country in the provision of uh, uh, education and especially in focus to junior school. Uh, so we'll be able to explore quite a number of those areas that, of course, we made a discussion about. We will also be looking at the skills that are necessary for the management of junior schools. And therefore, ideally here is to uh, ensure that as school leaders, you get the necessary competencies that are required, even as you manage um, the junior schools. So we will do a sample of uh, the competencies and a reminder of what we learned about uh, uh, the competencies last uh, season, uh, so that uh, as a way of refreshing ourselves, then as we pass out, then we know exactly what kind of skills uh, you will be required to have as you run the junior schools uh, uh, in, um, uh, where you, you you are the leaders. Then um, we will also have a discussion about institutional-based quality assurance and data management. Remember, of course, uh, as school leaders, uh, internally from the schools, you are the quality assurance and the standards officers. And therefore, our expectation is that you should be able to actually carry out quality assurance uh, at the institutional level. So, the focus here on institutional-based quality assurance is uh, to ensure that we are not uh, uh, waiting to actually uh, get uh, uh, expertise from outside the institution to come and guide us on how to assure quality in the running of our institutions. Rather, uh, of course, this is something that should be institutionalized something that, of course, we should be at the forefront and something that we should be able to carry out as, as school leaders. So that is the concept of uh, IBQA. Uh, remember, as school leaders, you also manage data. And that is why, of course, in our discussion, we must talk about the National Education Management Information System, NEMIS, uh, which is actually the data, data bank for all the uh, school leaders and, of course, uh, school staff, uh, and therefore uh, it is very important that as school leaders, we get to understand the fact that we will be required to adequately manage data. Recently, we have um, a legislation on data management. We have a law on 
uh, uh, data protection, and therefore it is very important that we also uh, discuss that uh, in terms of uh, whether you are data processors or data consumers, and what does the law say about the management of data? Uh, from in, um, the perspective of the employer, you realize that um, uh, there is a lot of data that you are also earning from the Teacher Service Commission, uh, and therefore uh, it is uh, good that we also make a mention of the kind of data that is within your disposal for management. And lastly, we will also uh, remind ourselves about the good governance practices. Ideally, of course, uh, this unit is about institutional governance. Uh, of course, um, in, 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 in governance, we have the principles of uh, corporate governance that you should also adhere to, the principles of accountability, um, the, 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 the principles of effectiveness, uh, uh, ensuring that, of course, um, uh, we, 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 we are carrying out our activities above board and that we are not subject to uh, integrity uh, issues. Uh, and therefore, um, ideally, this is what we should be able to remind ourselves uh, in this particular uh, unit. Maybe to uh, delve deep uh, into our discussion this afternoon, uh, I would like us to look at an activity. And uh, this activity, uh, I would invite uh, our IT uh, to Aquila to guide us into what he expects us to do. Uh, the activity is on how we implement uh, the junior schools as guided by the several legal and policy uh, frameworks, and therefore will be required to identify the key legal and policy frameworks that guide the implementation of junior schools. So Aquila, uh, I invite you to guide us on whether we are, we are going to use the chat box or the slido for this particular uh, activity. Over to you, Aquila. Thank you, Mr. Kisili. Uh, we are going to use the slido. I'll open the activity. Check on the chat. You see an invitation. Click view or open. I hope we have managed to go to the Slido in the chat forum and open it. Um, if you've managed, then of course you should be able to see uh, the question uh, that uh, I have just given from the activity. And then of course you'll be expected to enter your responses and then you, you send them. We'll be able to sample them. So uh, let's have our answers coming. Uh, in terms of uh, identifying the key legal and policy frameworks that guide us in implementing junior schools in Kenya. So I can see two people are already typing. Let's have the responses coming. We have the basic education hacks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already 
the constitution of Kenya, very good. Mm -hmm. So, we have sustainable development goals, presidential working party reports on education reforms. Mm -hmm. We have the Vision 2030. Uh -huh. We have the Children's Act. We are still sampling your responses. Vision 2030, the Children's Act. Basic Education Act. I would like to see your responses uh, in terms of um, uh, the legal and policy legislations, even from a regional and global perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Let's have more responses. We are 55 in this class, and therefore we expect uh, some more responses coming up. The basic education curriculum framework. Mm -hmm. It is of 2017. We have African agenda, very good. African Agenda 2063. Mm -hmm. SDG. Uh, I think um, there is a response on Millennium Development Goals. I think this should be Sustainable Development Goals, and especially goal number four. Uh, we are actually uh, using the SDGs SDG4, very good. Um, these are good responses that are coming from the floor and thank you very much. Uh, I really want to appreciate uh, all of us for those responses, at least um, when we sample them, we should see the, uh, the fact of um, uh, legal and, and policy frameworks that are actually taking uh, the dimension of what uh, policy directives we should follow even from the global perspective, from the regional perspective, and uh, from um, uh, the national perspective. Uh, um, I would like maybe to, to get to hear from us uh, uh, about um, what each or uh, what some of these legislations, of course, as, as, uh, what, what, is, what is the spirit of these uh, legislations. Uh, I know, yes, we've gone to the extent of listing them, uh, identifying them, but it is important that we also go to the extent of trying to identify uh, what some of these, of course, uh, legislation and policy frameworks uh, talk about on matters of education, provision of education in the country. So maybe, Aquila, you can stop the sharing of your screen and then we engage our participants. Uh, I would like to get, uh, for example, uh, the Basic Education Act, which is the law that governs uh, the provision of education uh, in Kenya. What does it? What 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 is it about? And what uh, what what we borrow from the Basic Education Act in terms of the provision of education? Uh, so we could get you could raise up your hand and share with us uh, what the Basic Education uh, Basic Education Act of 2013 uh, uh, um, says about the provision of education. It is education. Yes, Salome? Yes, uh, Basic Education Fund 2013, it is education for all. Uh, sorry, sorry, we, we, it's like we have not really gotten your answer. Well. 
I'm uh, saying that uh, basic education for 2013 explains about education is uh, based on all learners, education for all. Yeah, um, ideally, the Basic Education Act, Act of 2013 talks about that the fact that of education being a, a, a right and a right for all persons. Uh, therefore, uh, as school leaders, we need to know that uh, uh, when we are leading our institutions, uh, we should understand the fact that um, education is a basic a basic right. Uh, to all persons. So that is borrowed from the Basic Education Act of 2013. Agnes, yes, Agnes, you can unmute yourself. Agnes, Dambuki. Uh, as Agnes tries to, un, uh, to, to unmute herself, we can also hear from Lois Mutio. Your hand is up. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it ensures uh, there's free and compulsory education for all children mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lois. That, uh, of course, uh, she's tried to also add to the fact that um, uh, Education uh, is actually uh, compulsory for all learners in the country. And therefore, as a school leader, we have a responsibility of ensuring that uh, uh, all school heads going children, of course, attend school. Uh, you can lo lower your hand, Lois, and then uh, we see whether Hagnes has, um, has, uh, has been able to uh, low, uh, to, to get uh, to unmute herself. Or possibly low, Agnes is not aware that her hand is up. Uh, I would like to, to also hear about um, uh, what does the Children's Act of 2022 as a legal provision uh, talk about on, on matters provision of education in this country? Peter Mololo, your hand is up. Kindly unmute. I'll speak to us about the Children's Act of 2022. Mololo, it's like we've lost you. Any other person to give a response to that? About the Children's Act of 2022? You can raise up your hand. Louis, again. Yes, thank you. I think it deals with inclusive education for children with social needs. Uh, Louis, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so, Louis. <laughs> uh, Louis but I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you've tried. Thank you. Uh, I can see Rosalia and Peter, your hands are up. So Rosalia, let's have Rosalia first, and then uh, Peter, then next we have Joseph. Ro Rosalia, kindly unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, it is aimed at making provision for children's rights, parental responsibility, the kind of care of children, including a guardianship, foster care placement, and adoption. Thank you very much, Rosalia. The provision um, for care and protection of children. Yes, provision and care of children is, is actually a, a law that protects our children even as they go uh, through school. You should be able to know that children also have their rights and their rights are also enshrined in the Children's Act. I would like you to constantly make reference to that uh, so that you know also the rights that uh, govern, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the rights that the children have even as they go through uh, school. Uh, I would like to maybe get a feel of uh, what the African Agenda 2063 is all about and how it relates to our provision of education uh, in junior school. Joseph Mafuku.
Joseph, and then Peter. Kindly unmute yourself. Yes, Peter. Okay, James Mutunga. Your hand is up. Eh? James. It's like you have issues with your internet, James. We can't hear you well. So who else can tell us about the, what the African Agenda 2063 as a legislation, as a policy legislation is all about, and how it relates to the provision of uh, education? J Joseph, Joseph, kindly try how this... Joseph Mutua. Kindly unmute. I'm saying. Hello? Yes, we can Hello, hear you, Joseph. Yeah, we can hear so, you, Joseph. African Agenda 2063. Yes. And tell, tell about Africa sustainable development in all mm -hmm. sectors in education, industrialization and also economically the Africans needs to grow so that they can be self-reliant apart from uh, being depending on other countries. So it is working towards the growth in terms of every sector, including education. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, maybe to, incl to include uh, the fact that uh, that is to be achieved through science, technology, and innovation. Thank you very much, yeah. Joseph. Uh, Elliot, yeah. Elliot, I think you have something to chip in. Kindly unmute yourself, Elliot. Hello. Yeah, we can Hello. hear you now. Yes, we can yeah. hear you. Thank you, thank you, Martin. This talks about Africa harnessing resources to finance its education and uh, getting from the traditional practice of relying on um, other countries to finance its education. And of course, Africa, the, the, the base, base for education in the world of course, by use of uh, technology and the rest. Thank you. Yeah, technology, science, and innovation as well. Eh? Yes. Dennis, you have, uh, your, your hand is up. You can, uh, you can lower your hand, Eliud and uh, Joseph. Dennis, or we know. Thank you. Um, Mr. Martin. Maybe just to add what my colleagues have said, that the African Agenda 2063 was adopted by the African Union as a strategic framework aiming for the socioeconomic transformation of Africa. And uh, some of the goals include, includes uh, inclusive growth, sustainable development, and improved education systems. So in conjunction to the, the junior school in Kenya, um, it is adapted or adopted to include quality and inclusive education, where it emphasizes of about quality and sustainable education to all, uh, more so in the Kenya junior school system, uh, in, a, in line with the this by focusing on competency-based education, 
ensuring that the uh, skills development and inclusivity, especially for maybe the marginalized groups. And then it also talks about the technological integrations where the CBC or the competence-based education has uh, factored the issue of uh, digital literacy, uh, which uh, is much emphasized because of the changing needs in the, educations, uh, in the education sector. She also talked about, talks about youth empowerment by focusing on uh, foundation skills uh, at the junior level uh, and empowerment as per the, um, that is the African agenda. It also, lastly, it talks about uh, lifelong learning. So it encourages a culture of uh, continuous learning and the Kenya's educational reforms, particularly the introduction of junior schools lay the groundwork for lifelong learning and emphasizing diverse skills and critical thinking. I think that is uh, what I have. Thank you very much, Dennis, uh, for that response. I think um, it, it is quite uh, comprehensive in terms of what uh, uh, African Agenda 2063 ex espouses. And therefore, colleagues, what I would like maybe to mention at this point in time is that um, it is very important that we link the legal and policy frameworks uh, in, in, uh, with our responsibility as school leaders. Remember, uh, in, in most of our responsibilities, uh, we are guided uh, by also legal and policy frameworks, even in uh, uh, ensuring that we dispense of our responsibility. It is, that is the reason why I went a step further to maybe inquire whether you, you still remember what each of those legal policy uh, and uh, policy frameworks uh, talk about and how they relate to the provision and how we implement um, education at uh, the junior school level. So uh, thank you very much for your responses and uh, for um, maybe um, your engagement in terms of uh, giving us um, uh, responses. We, we move on to um, our next activity, which we should take as a very short time and uh, in this activity, we are guided to go to our chat boxes. Uh, uh, we identify the functions of the junior uh, school management committee. So let us go to the to the uh, chat forum, and uh, using the chat box, we identify by listing the functions of the junior school uh, management committee. So. Uh, we will take the shortest time possible uh, so that we we, we, we sample uh, your responses. <laughs> So I will be sampling your responses shortly as they come in terms of the functions, uh, the functions of the junior school committee. I believe these are committees that are already in place in, in our institutions and uh, we are well aware of what kind of assignment they, 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 they carry out in our schools. So, uh, let's have the responses coming. We want just to check whether you are able to relate the work of these committees in terms of supporting uh, the operation, operationalization of uh, the junior schools. Uh -huh. I can see that, Dennis, you're talking about policy and governance. Mm -hmm. Policy and governance, uh, nutritional health, uh, ensuring nutritional health of learners, uh, financial management, resource mobilization, mentorship, uh, uh, improving education standards, policy implementation. That is from Joseph Mutua. That's good. Um, from Benson Muhindi, uh, they ensure prudent management of uh, junior school funds. Uh, so that is to make sure that they oversight the uh, they oversight, of course, some processes in financial management and procurement. Resource mobilization, very good. Uh, uh, 
overseeing the management of junior schools, uh, uh, financial management, employ employment of uh, uh, staff, um, a prudent use of uh, funds. Mm -hmm. Implementation of government policies, very good. Brilliant use of resources, development of school infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Preparation of um, uh, budgets. Really, <laughs> we'll be able to check into that. And they maintain a school culture, a discipline, uh, ensure discipline of learners and handling of discipline cases, community partnerships, very good, safety of learners, a very good, budget financial, budget and financial management. Uh, I think I'll, I'll share about that one. Resource, uh, resource mobilization, financial management, protection of children's rights, uh, proper documents, uh, uh, procedures, Expand, expanding of the resource base, community partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, I think I agree to all of us in terms of the kind of responses that you are giving. And ideally, when you talk about the, the committee, the junior school committee, management committee, ideally there are quite a number of key things that at this committee, uh, as you've just put across, are supposed to do. And one of them, is actually resource mobilization. Remember, resources are never enough in terms of um, finances, in terms of physical resources, human resources. And therefore, this committee comes in to assist us as school leaders, ensure that we mobilize for these resources. Um, uh, when we ensure that the resources are available, then now we go to the extent of ensure, ensuring that they are used as appropriate, uh, we also ensure that we have a linkage between, of course, the school and the community, uh, where the schools are found. We ensure the safety of the learners, uh, the nutrition of the learners, and, and, and all that. However, uh, there are quite a number of two things that I have identified from the chat forum, uh, which I would like to make a mention about. And this is on procurement of goods and services. Uh, and, uh, 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 and preparation of the budget. Um, let me uh, say that um, those two are uh, not uh, uh, functions of um, the junior school committee. The junior school committee is not in any way involved in the procurement of goods, works and services in our junior schools. Rather, they carry out an oversight function of this process. They ensure that this process, since this is a process that is guided by law, the Public Procurement Act of 2015 and the regulations of 2020, then we adhere to the guidelines in this uh, process. And uh, what the committee does is actually oversight. So the committee uh, does oversight to ensure that things are done in the manner in which they're supposed to be done. In terms of budgeting, we actually involve this committee uh, on matters of approval of the budget, but not really the budget preparation. Remember, the budget preparation is a function of the school leadership assisted by the user department. So we get budget estimates from the user department and uh, the user departments, of course, uh, after they, pro uh, they, they, they submit, of course, their estimates, then uh, the school leader, of course, ensures that they are compiled and of course a budget is, uh, is done. What the committee does is to approve that particular budget for use. Uh, and that is why we are saying, since they are aware of what the school will be buying from the estimates of the budget that they have actually already approved, then the law does not actually allow them to directly get involved in the procurement process since it will actually amount to conflict of interest. Otherwise, for the rest of the functions that you've provided in the chat forum, I actually agree with, with all of you uh, that uh, those are the kind of functions that, of course, we expect that committee to assist you on matters institutional governance, except 
on those two areas that I have highlighted. So thank you very much for, 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 for the responses. And uh, we still continue with our, our session. And um, we now would like to uh, look into yet uh, another, uh, another activity. And um, this is an activity that we will focus our attention uh, in terms of uh, our earlier uh, discussion on um, uh, institutional-based quality uh, assurance. So I'll invite um, Aquila uh, to guide us into how we'll be carrying out our third activity, uh, which will uh, basically be on uh, uh, institutional based quality assurance. So Aquila, kindly guide us on how we, we are expected to carry out this particular uh, assignment. So even as Aquila prepares this, this is an assignment that will be expected to carry out in breakout rooms. And uh, therefore Aquila will be giving us guidance on uh, how we will actually uh, be, uh, what we shall be undertaking in each of the breakout rooms. Remember we expect pa uh, active participation in the breakout rooms, uh, get a chairman and a secretary, and then of course uh, I give instructions on how they'll report back in the plenary. Over to you, Aquila. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kisili. Uh, I want to share my screen. So there will be five groups on this unit. The first group will tackle leadership and management. The second group will tackle curriculum organization and the implementation. The third group will tackle physical facilities and infrastructure. The fourth group, learners welfare. The fifth, community involvement. So you are supposed to identify the key focus area for one IBQA component provide relevant examples for the com component within your school. Then you'll present your findings at the plenary. Please choose the chair and the secretary within the shortest time possible. Thank you. Thank you, Aquila, even as uh, before you actually uh, take us into our various rooms, uh, colleagues, I would like us to maybe uh, be a, a bit focused as we look out in, uh, into this assignment. Ideally, I, I gave a background about IBQA and uh, as quality assurance officers, those are the components, of course, those are the areas that we must focus on as we actually assure quality in our schools. Matters, leadership and management, curriculum organization and implementation, the physical facilities and infrastructure, well, and welfare, and community involvement. So uh, those are the key focus areas when we always talk about uh, IBQA. And just like Aquila has just pointed out, uh, we ensure we want to ensure active participation. So the chair of the teams in each of the breakout rooms kindly ensure that the members are, are actively engaged in each of those discussions that will come along your way in the breakout room. So Akila, Akila you, you can uh, proceed to, Akila, you can proceed to actually uh, uh, allocate the rooms to us. In one minute, you go to the rooms.
So welcome back to the plenary. We hope that you had some fruitful discussions in the breakout rooms. Uh, and um, um, the assignment before us was to identify the key focus areas and provide relevant examples for each of the components. And the components are five. Uh, we have uh, the first one, which was on leadership at management. The second was on uh, curriculum implement and implementation, uh, curriculum organization and implementation. The third one was on physical facilities and infrastructure. The fourth was on learners' welfare, and the fifth is on community involvement. It's my hope that all of us have been able to get responses that we can share. So I will invite the chairperson, group one, uh, to lead us into the discussion of the first component. Identify the focus area and give us the relevant examples uh, for each of the components. Uh, in your case, you'll deal with leadership and management. Group one, I see there's Dennis Owino. Group one, uh, let us take the shortest time possible. Kisilu, kindly, I cannot hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Yes. I am requesting Group 1 leadership to uh, take us through uh, their report for discussions in the uh, breakout rooms. Uh, group 1? I think that yes, group one has a, I'm saying Group 1 has a secretary. Yes. Uh, uh, I, uh, he, he has written the points down. Request him to Miriam present. The, yeah, Miriam, where is the secretary? Uh, he has disappeared, it seems. Uh, hello, James. Miriam is here. Mr. Kisulu, I got lost. You could not sorry, be sorry. heard. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Miriam, now. Yeah, uh, this is group one discussing the first area of leadership and uh, management. Our secretary, Secretary Bwana Muliali, James Muliali. James Muliali is we, where are you? Seemingly, let, let me help out the first point as, uh, as we find out our secretary. The first point. Yeah, we can, I can I can give the points because I was also noting. Okay. Yeah, the first point is a uh, uh, vision and uh, state uh, stating the school vision and strategic thinking about the vision. Uh, a clear vision should be set for future teamwork use in this institution. Point number two, stating long-term goals and creating creating uh, plans uh, to and also inspire employees to work under common goal as a team. Point three, creating a positive character uh, characterized mutual respect, comma inclusion and uh, sense of belonging for all learners or students. Point four, providing leadership and guidance uh, to learners. And examples are like in areas of uh, in discipline, areas of uh, lack of maybe the basic needs for uh, to be used in school or institution or in learning. Also offering uh, support to the staff and also the subordinate staff. And another point is of guiding the government policies and a follow up for the same implementation of the policies in the institution. Maybe the other members on behalf of the secretary can add another point that I've left out. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Um, Dennis, anything to add on to that? Uh, maybe I just add uh, two points. Yes. One, uh, one main focus on leadership and management is about uh, crisis management. Uh, 
leaders are supposed to be able to solve situation like uh, recently we've had uh, maybe schools uh, getting involved in uh, incidences that uh, are not good. So leaders should be prepared to manage crisis by staying calm, making quick decision, and coordinating responses effectively to minimize damage to the organization. And the other one is about ethical leadership. Uh, you know, in our country, we talk about ethics and we don't actualize it when it comes to uh, maybe you are given an office to bear. Uh, you can only talk about ethics and leadership when you're not in position, but when you get the position, you don't. So leaders must model integrity and ethical behavior, setting a strong example for others to follow and this builds a trust within the organization. So it will help to maintain good re, uh, reputation externally and both internally and externally. I think those are the two points I would, I would add to the group members. Thank you very much, group one. I think um, that is a good attempt. Maybe for me, what I also expected to hear from um, group one is about the establishment of uh, leadership structures uh, in uh, the institutions of learning. And uh, of course, one of the examples of a leadership structure is like uh, the boards of management. It is important that we have the boards of management in place, the school management committees in place, the, the student leadership structures in place, and a clear structure of administration of the school, right from the school uh, principal or the school head teacher to the deputies, to the senior teachers, to the class teachers and all that. So I want just to remind the team that uh, it's also good as you and all the other focus areas, you also ensure that there are the relevant management structures in place. It is uh, important that a school operates with a valid Board of Management. Uh, in the case of a junior school, we know that there's a transitional caretaker committee currently known as a JS committee, which should be in place. So those are some of the things that we expected uh, also to uh, hear from that team. But nevertheless, thank you very much for your good contributions. And uh, we want to appreciate you for the good work. I can see already Miriam is appreciating uh, the team. We can also appreciate uh, Group 1 uh, uh, for the good work that you've done. Thank you, Jacinta. Thank you, Rehema. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Anthony, for appreciating. Uh, uh, thank you, Inke, also for appreciating, of course, uh, Team 1. Let's get the responses and let us uh, take the shortest time possible. Group 2, on curriculum organization and implementation, group two. Okay. Chairperson? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Lois is our secretary. Take us through, please. Lois Mutio, please. Good, yeah, thank you, Chalegi and uh, Mr. Kistilo. Uh, group two are discussing about uh, curriculum implementation organization. Oh, and, and implementation that is. Now, we came up with the following point. The first one was uh, school leadership should make sure there is, uh, first of all, a block timetable for classes. Then now, uh, the school and, uh, leadership should also ensure the school as, as the rationalized curriculum designs. The school should also ensure there is teaching uh, staff and in case of any shortage, they should employ BOM teachers to avoid understaffing. Then uh, next point, they should avoid learners' absenteeism and also teachers' absenteeism. They should also ensure time management uh, to make sure that time is not wasted. Then uh, provision of relevant learning materials. Uh, the school should also ensure there is enough safe and conducive environment in the school and also ensure adequate infrastructure and the infrastructure should also be safe. Then um, the school should also ensure uh, this learner support uh, they are provided, for example, guidance and counseling and also career choices. 
The lacking materials should be procured to support learning. We also talked about the vision of both learners and teachers. Then uh, the, the management should also ensure there is quality assessment of learners and also timely syllabus coverage. Uh, the school should also monitor learners' progress. Then uh, guidance of the learners, uh, learners should be guided on their pathways. And um, actually, that is what two came up with. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Louis. Are you done? Yes, yes, I'm done. Thank you, thank you Louis, for that feedback. Thank you, Louis, for that feedback on uh, how we organize and implement the curriculum. I think those are very valid uh, uh, points on um, uh, uh, curriculum organization. I, I want to emphasize, of course, the fact of um, the availability of um, the uh, learning materials, availability of the, the timetables to plan, of course, at the curriculum, uh, the availability of the designs. And uh, maybe uh, what I would also uh, suggest to the team is uh, also to ensure that they guide uh, the teachers appropriately in junior school, especially because some of the designs, uh, you've talked about the curriculum designs. I remember some of the curriculum designs from KICD, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, are uh, already in draft form. And uh, since they, uh, being in draft form, it means that, of course, they have not been finalized. And uh, we have to access these the curriculum designs online. And therefore, uh, it is the responsibility of the school leader to guide the relevant, uh, of course, or the teachers on how to access the relevant curriculum designs and from what uh, site and in what form. Remember, if we don't guide them with that information, then, of course, there could constantly be complaints about we cannot organize the curriculum for this learning area because of the unavailability of our design. So at these formative stages when we still are developing uh, learning areas, curriculum designs for the new learning areas, it's also very important for you as a school leader to constantly remind our teachers in junior school that um, as you assure quality, then na uh, none of the learning areas is affected in terms of the availability of uh, the materials that are required to organize and implement the curriculum. And one good example is those designs that are in draft form by KICD and which we must get actually through, uh, 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 we, we must actually uh, have them uh, availed online. So thank you very much, Group 2. Let us appreciate Group 2 for uh, a good work that they've done. Uh, that was quite comprehensive, Group 2. We really appreciate you. Uh, for uh, the good work that you've done. We are giving you thumbs up and uh, uh, we are also uh, clapping to appreciate the good work uh, that you've done. So um, group three, uh, let us hear about the focus areas and the physical facilities and infrastructure, uh, and then you give us some relevant examples. Thank you, Group 3. Rosalia Gisela was the chair. Uh, Florian Monania was the secretary. Kindly, Florian, take us through uh, what we discussed about. Thank you, Madam Chair, through uh, Mr. Kisilo. I think you can hear me. We can hear you very well. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Welcome to Group 3. We are tackling physical facilities and infrastructure. So on our part as school leaders, we must ensure that we have enough classrooms for the pupils or for the learners to use. And in case we don't have enough, we should source for the funds to build enough classrooms from the state orders, the alumni, and also using the available funds from the government. We should also ensure that we have enough furniture that is for 
proper seating arrangement of the learners that they make sure they are comfortable using the lockers, the chairs, and also even the desks that they have been using in the primary school. On the same, we are also supposed to ensure that we have enough sanitation blocks that are safe for use by the learners, and then ensure that we have a washing point after the visitation of the washrooms. Also, as school leaders, we must ensure that there are playing grounds that are filled, which are level, and then they, are, they have maintained equipment for games and sports. We also discussed about having enough rooms in the school, and if in case we don't have lamps, we said that we should have some rooms being used as internal lamps. Sometimes we can use them for home sense work and also keeping agricultural tools and also have rooms to use as library. Then we also discussed about leaders, we must ensure that we tackle all the areas to improve them so that they can provide security and safety of learners. And also the school must have structures that do not uh, allow learners to be on healthy and healthy essence. We also discussed about having a kitchen for preparation of meals in case we have a feeding program. Last but not the least, the roofs for the classrooms and also the walls must be strong enough not to be blown easily by the winds. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Group uh, 3, uh, for that feedback. Uh, majorly, they have borrowed from the guidelines for the uh, construction of infrastructure in our schools, and I, I, I still want to refer the entire team to the same guidelines. Uh, uh, when you are assuring quality uh, in terms of uh, physical uh, facilities and infrastructure, there are government uh, uh, provisions in terms of guidance of what is expected when we are developing infrastructure in our schools. One, uh, we have guidelines uh, from the Ministry of Education that we have to follow in the development of the infrastructure in terms of um, size, in terms of uh, uh, adequacy uh, for the various use. Uh, for example, let me give an example of uh, the case of our learners in junior school. Remember, these are uh, learners that are transiting from uh, uh, grade six uh, to junior school. And uh, the kind of infrastructure that we need to provide in terms of maybe sitting tables and chairs should be appropriate to their age. That is infrastructure uh, that is uh, uh, suitable for their use that is comfortable for their use. Uh, so ideally, when we are talking about the playgrounds, we must ensure that they are safe and we are, must also follow the school safety uh, uh, and standards manual, uh, which uh, would be the key reference points, especially when we are looking at uh, uh, assurance of quality in this uh, key focus area. So uh, I want to say that um, it is very important that we make constant reference to what the Ministry of Education has put in place in terms of the guidelines for the development of infrastructure. And uh, uh, we always constantly make reference to the School Safety and Standards Manual when we are now coming up with the specific facilities that you have correctly identified the issues of classrooms, the issues of uh, toilets. And remember, there is even a ratio for the toilets. In the case of the girls, we have a ratio of one latrine should be used by 25 girls, and there must be a bathroom in place. One toilet to be used by 25 boys, and there should be a urinal in place. So those are some of the specifics. When I when we talked about examples 
and especially examples that of course now are very specific to each of the focus areas. When we are now assuring quality, for example, you have identified infrastructure and that infrastructure is the, the, the toilets in our schools. We go and see whether based on the population of your school, the number of latrines are enough for the boys, enough for the girls, based on the guidelines for the ministry in terms of what should be the ratio that should be adequate for use within a given number uh, of student population. And therefore, uh, those are some of the things that I expected that we give uh, uh, clear examples about. And uh, I want to also appreciate the team for the good work. Rosalia Kisele, your hand is up. Maybe you have something to add on to what that group has put across. Rosalia, yeah. yes. Yeah, we also had a point of collaborating with the nearby secondary schools in the case yes. of laboratories. Yes, sharing of resources, very good. Rosalia, thank you very much. You've reminded us of a very important point. At this point in time, we know that uh, resources are not available. And the government guideline is that as junior school school leaders, it is important that we collaborate with actually our schools from within an environment in the sharing of resources. Thank you very much, uh, Rosalia, for that point. Let's move on to group four. And group four uh, is uh, handling learner welfare. Group four, quickly. Yes, this is group four, Martin. Yes. Madam Jacinta is our secretary. We are talking about learner's welfare. Sister Jacinta, where are you? Yes, Chair. Allow me to take them through what you discussed. Carry on, please. The following are the areas that Group 4 members identified as the key uh, focus for the learners' welfare. And the first one is the academic performance, bearing in mind that we've ushered here in the CBT, and therefore uh, we should emphasize on nurturing the learners' competencies, more so to inform them on the different pathways that they are to take. We also talked about retention, and attendance of learners that is uh, not being absent from school and uh, remaining there to complete the course. The other area is learner discipline, where uh, we should endeavor to have a conducive environment where uh, disputes among us learners can be resolved amicably. We identified health and sanitation where we saw it's a concern as far as learner welfare is concerned, uh, because health is a uh, paramount importance, as well as the sanitation. We talked about offering psychosocial support, including, but not limited to guidance and counseling, career guidance, and mental health support. The learners bearing in mind that uh, we are talking about the GF, who are facing a myriad of our challenges. We talk to the safety of the learners in the school. It is a, a, a concern of the learner welfare that the children, the learners should feel safe within the school compound. In the school setup, the, uh, we can, uh, this is how they can be made relevant in the school setup. Uh, putting in place guidance and counseling clubs where my patrons will be put in place. Uh, to discuss uh, to discuss uh, issues pertaining to learners, uh, feeding programs, feeding programs will go a long way in retaining learners in class, and uh, they shall be able to complete the course uh, uh, on time. We can have lunch under the feeding program in cases where they may not afford many meals. We also talked about having the children's government for the leadership in place, where employee learners can, uh, can be channeling uh, that which they wish to, ch uh, to share with the administration. We said that it is a concern that the school complies with the safety standards when they are, during their they are doing their construction, putting the infrastructure in place to avoid unnecessary risk of the learners' uh, health as well as their lives. 
we also saw that uh, it should be, we should ensure uh, that we have a healthy club where Empire Matters Health can be discussed and the pattern should be put in place. And if uh, need be, we should have a suggestion box where Empire learners can be uh, uh, putting the concerns that they have uh, concerning their welfare. That is the match that Group 4 was able to offer. Let, thank you. Thank you very much, Group 4, uh, led by Eliud and uh, Jacinta. Uh, for me, you've tried to exceed expectations. Uh, you've really come out so clearly in terms of um, uh, what we expect to do under LANA uh, welfare. We support them on matters, academics, nutrition, and health. And of course, you went ahead to identify correctly uh, the lunch programs and all that, safety, ensuring safety and protection of the learners, uh, ensuring that you put in place the learner support programs like the guidance and counseling pastoral programs, children's governments in place. So thank you very much, Group 4, for that uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, on that particular focus area. And now, lastly but not least, we would like to hear from um, uh, Group 5 on community involvement. Group 5. Mm. Hello, everyone, once again. Um, I'm going to talk about the community development as we discuss with our group. Are you getting me? We can hear Hello? you, Lucy. Lucy, yes. we can hear you. We, yes, we said that, uh, that we first of all let the we involve the parents, the teachers, even the pupils and stakeholders to own the school first. Second, we talked of um, involving the community uh, to participate in school, doing uh, community policy making. Uh, meetings. Also, the parents. Um, to we 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 involve the school by providing the facilities in school to be used by the youth, to be used during a, a medical camping. We can also use the school. The community can use the school by providing facilities, especially weddings can be can take place in the school. Also, we talked of networking, involving the community to network, especially when the school, the sponsors or the stakeholders are aware about the assessment, the needs of the school. They can try to specify which area needs attention, especially building of the school toilets, and the school is not able to afford, the, 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 they are not able to afford the the, the 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 school competition is not enough, so the school can do the fundraising whereby they can involve the the community. Networking means we can consult um, members of of parliament, governors, sponsors from outside to assist where possible. Also for the community, we talked of um, involving the chief, who is very more aware about the, the problems which are around the, the, the school. So chief is one of the important person. Also sub-county, Minister of Education, Linders, can be involved to assist in, in making the school to look better or to, to, to solve any issues concerning the school. Community also can be involved in security, especially grabbing of the land, <coughs> title of the, of the school, fencing the school, planting trees within the environment that can help the community. The community can help the school. Also, the last point, we talked of... Um, uh, <coughs> We have, um, I think I'm through using the thank resources. You, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Lucy. I think um, that is good. Uh, we, we cannot forget the fact of uh, 
involving the community in decision making matters of the school through AGMs as well. And uh, when you talk about allowing the community to use the resources, uh, we, we talk about allowing the community to use the resources of the school, but in a reasonable way. Reasonable means, of course, you have to uh, do not disadvantage uh, the, the, the use of the facilities by the learners uh, when you are also allowing the community to use. Uh, networking as well to um, uh, also expand your, your resource base. So, so participants, I want to really thank you for uh, that wonderful discussion on HiBQA, which has really taken good shape uh, in terms of uh, maybe reminding ourselves about the, the, the thematic areas and the focus areas and uh, the relevant examples, so that even as we uh, pass out to become the quality assurance officers in our schools, then we know the areas that we need to really uh, focus on. So you will allow me to share the screen uh, so that we we get to to uh, uh, view our extended learning activity and uh, ma ma majorly as we look into our extended learning activity, uh, the idea here is um, to refocus our um, our 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 thinking in terms of ensuring that our extended learning activity. Uh, takes the form of uh, the requirements of the e-portfolio submission. We would like to see uh, the artifacts that are well reflected upon. And therefore, even as we give you the directions on how we need you to do, uh, it is not about just uploading the image of the discussion about the quality assurance system, where we are requiring that you identify one of the thematic areas and explain the strategies you put in place to ensure how you have achieved that in your school. Rather, we would like to see you reflect deeply into actually that particular artifact that you are coming up, which is a discussion about the thematic area. And therefore, uh, remember, uh, uh, just like we said yesterday in the e-portfolio, of course, is carrying a lot of Wait in terms of the assessment for this course, it is expected that you actually uh, make the right submissions. So uh, we will still allow you the opportunity to revisit your extended learning activity and ensure that it is submitted in the correct form. So thank you very much for being there uh, during this particular session. We will be taking a short break. And uh, when we reconvene in a short uh, in a few minutes' time, we will have a discussion about um, uh, the most significant change story form. And uh, uh, we still remind you of where to get the reflective journal questions in the community hub of your hub, uh, so that now you wind up on uh, the requirements uh, that uh, for this course in terms of um, assessment. Remember the, 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 the reflective journal questions form part of your assessment as well uh, and therefore it is important that you get to know exactly where they are placed in the community hub uh, as you go through your app then you are well guided into where to find them so we take a short break and uh, we will be reconvening shortly uh, for that next session thank you very much and thank you for being there So, so at what time will we be coming back? We will be reconvening at 4 p.m. on the dot. So by uh, uh, some three, four minutes to four, we will be, we should be back in this uh, forum.
the approach of app based is okay because we are living in a technology world. You cannot learn from technology. So one thing I like because we are being trained how to use these apps. So it is for us to embrace it. And to me, I see it is a wonderful one because we have to embrace technology, whether you like it or not. We are living in the world of technology. So The challenges that are mostly are found in schools, you will find that the there is teacher shortage there is also lack of infrastructure mostly those two affect the school setup and we before in before we even OTSC send some teachers to our schools we use the primary school teachers to teach those those learners in the junior schools now when they came still we found that they are not enough they are not adequate to teach those those lessons or the learners and therefore what we we normally we also do you find that we have now to to take some teachers from the primary level so that they can assist them as we know most of the schools right now possibly if they have many teachers they may only be three like my school i only have three three teachers and looking at the number of subjects that they're supposed to 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 be taught that is why now you have to take those teachers from the primary level so that they can assist in those in those areas now when we come to to the lack of infrastructure like we we may not be having enough or the, the government has not yet built up to now some some classes so we normally use those classes that they used previously when they were in primary so that they can they can learn from there and then we see they are in junior school we expect them to be sitting on lockers but since up to now we cannot have we don't have enough funds to buy those lockers that is why we make them use those desks that they used in the primary section when it comes to to lack of labor, laboratories that is when now we take them to the nearby nearby schools secondary schools so that they can at least learn some of those areas that need some laboratories one of the major challenge um facing is on human resource. Uh, like as for now, I have two grades, grade seven and eight, with only three teachers. And these teachers take specific subject. So you realize that some of the subjects are not catered for. Most uh, one big uh, challenge is uh, understaffing, which uh, we have tried to solve it by taking up qualified teachers from the primary level to take up. Uh, some subjects in the JSS and uh, in terms of ICT we try to provide some tools make sure they are available giving the teachers bundles making sure we maintain those uh, tools so that they'll be able to teach efficiently. Biasness. Biasness and uh, this one comes from the, the, the men, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> men look down upon women and they are very biased. You can hear that uh, two thirds of this, this, this uh, a third of this group must be women. Then you find that there is only one woman among so many men 
and uh, the men don't even feel whether they are they have done something wrong because of that biasness and looking down upon the women. Again, we have discrimination in women leadership. Women are so much discriminated. I don't know because of their nature. I don't know they are say they are lazy. They are discriminated on on several lines. I, I don't know why. And the women are equal to the task and they can really deliver. The age brackets that we are in decreates that because uh, when we are getting into service 30 years ago, 25 years ago, that was the trend. But watch this space. In the next five years, it will be difficult to get men in leadership positions. It will be up to, majority of these positions will be taken up by women. Look at the generation. Those heads in their 40s, up to 75 percent because I'm in the schools. That is the position. So it is a matter of time. Yes. have not been uh, out to go and take because they believe they'll be separated from family or something like that so they are shying away from taking leadership roles. getting a lot of information that we're not sure of and that has come at the right time because it's going to make us uh, better, more effective leaders than we were before. And uh, because of the new technology that's coming in, we believe you're going to get to be stronger and be able to monitor uh, the, the curriculum implementation well in our institutions. I appreciate the organizers came in VUOB. It's a very wonderful training. It will help me as a leader to become an efficient leader. Because from here, I'll go and cascade to what I have learned. I turn to my, first of all, to my teachers and also to my fellow head teachers in my zone. So to me, it is a wonderful training. This training is very important at this level because we are getting a lot of information that we are not sure of and that has come at the right time because it's going to make us uh, better, more effective leaders than we were before. And uh, because of the new technology that's coming in, we believe you're going to get to be stronger and be able to monitor uh, the, the curriculum implementation well in our institutions. I appreciate the organizers came in VUOB. It's a very wonderful training. It will help me as a leader to become an efficient leader. Because from here, I'll go and cascade to what I have learned. I turn to my, first of all, to my... 
So welcome back. I think we agreed to reconvene at 4 and uh, it's now exactly 4 p.m. And um, we would like to request that uh, you alert your colleagues who have left to quickly join us. We will be discussing in some few minutes time um, the reflective journal questions and where you'll expect to uh, uh, to find them in the LMS or in the hub. Uh, however, I'm even informed that uh, quite a number have even submitted their reflective journal questions, which is a, a good indicator of uh, uh, the requirements for uh, this course. So somebody, Susan Zioka, uh, says that she cannot hear us. I don't know whether... Uh, from the technical bench. Aquila, you can hear me? Yes. Hello. All right. I think um, it's a problem from um, our side. So I'll request Aquila to share um, from the LMS the reflective journal questions so that we remind ourselves about what is expected of us in terms of uh, the assessment of the reflective journal. There are two key questions that we expect you to respond to from uh, the perspective of a reflective journal, which clearly highlights your learning journey uh, all the way uh, from where we started up to where we are. So you'll expect to find these questions in the community hub. Uh, I know this is uh, uh, familiar to all of us. And um, uh, like you can see now, we are doing it live from the LMS. Um, so, um, the reflective journal guiding questions are two, and uh, just to remind you that uh, the, re the reflective journal, of course, uh, accounts of our learning experiences, and therefore, as part of uh, the requirements for uh, the completion of this course, uh, we will uh, expect that you uh, make a submission of a reflective journal uh, based on uh, how you are uh, being able to link what you have learned to practice. And therefore, uh, for the purposes of assessment, we'll be looking, we'll be able to look at this in terms of how deeply you've reflected on this linkage and how you have related uh, uh, them to the learning experiences uh, that you have had uh, as evidence of professional growth uh, demonstrated throughout uh, the learnings in this course. So the, the, the guiding questions are two, and uh, we have even given you a limit of the number of words we expect you to uh, make the submissions. So for each of the submissions, we do not expect you to use more than 250 words. And for the first question, we would like you to describe your personal learning journey. Your personal learning journey, uh, and of course, it is a learning journey that you've taken in effective school leadership course. Uh, and here, we'll expect you to highlight the key insights from the course. Um, that will be the first question. Uh, the second reflective journal question uh, will require you to describe a practical situation where you applied the knowledge and skills and, that you acquired from effective school leadership for junior schools course. So here we would like to see a testimony of maybe uh, one of the key areas where you've been able to, um, uh, you can stop sharing the screen. So we are saying that it is important that you make a linkage of your learning journey in terms of the insights that you've learned, and then you try to give us a, a testimonial of uh, a practical situation where you apply the knowledge and skills that you acquired uh, from this particular course. Um, so we, um, uh, we will be opening up. Uh, I, I want to confirm to you that uh, these questions are already available uh, for your 
maybe uh, interrogation, uh, even after this assignment. And therefore, uh, once you are done with them, uh, submit them, and then we'll be able to look at them uh, from our end. I would like to invite my brother, Peter, to take us through the most significant change form. Yeah, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, do you remember when we were when we met during the face to face the last check in that we had we talked of uh, a collection of uh, the stories which will be coming from the from you the school leaders and this is in terms of uh, since the course is more of uh, practical in terms of uh, being an effective school leader we were hoping that uh, some of the aspects that you will pick from the course you will apply them or uh, uh, start practicing them and uh, we would want to hear from you as, uh, as the school leaders if there has been any change that has happened in your school uh, based on uh, okay from you participating in this course so we'll be opening a, a form that you will allow you to share your story let me let me uh, show you the form yes. Uh, you'll still you'll find the the tool and uh, end of course surveys and then more significant change. So there may have been some changes that will happen in your school uh, when you intentionally decide to practice what you have gone through. So we're asking you to give us your story that I, by highlighting some of, one of the most significant change that has happened in your school. See after you have taken this course. So the, we have three questions there. During the past six months, what was the most significant significant change that took place in your school because you took part in this course. And the second question we're asking is why do you consider this to be the most significant change? And then you link uh, that change to your participation in this course. So those are the three questions that we're asking you. And uh, then once you submit the your story, we'll be sampling some of them and coming over to your school to verify the, the stories that you have provided. And that means that your story has to be authentic, that when uh, we come over, it's something that we can come and verify. So we will be sampling a few, perhaps, uh, let's say like five, that will do a follow-up. We come over to your school and then we add now more fresh to your story. So some of you have already submitted. The form is already open. So this and these stories, they are not assess accessible, so they are not earning marks, but it's uh, just a form of uh, you giving us the kind of impact that may have happened in your school. So this form is already open. You need, you can take your time. You can have the stories either somewhere and then you come and put it there. Uh, so you only need to take your time, uh, no rushing, but we'll have a deadline of, uh, we'll be giving you two weeks or three weeks after today for you to submit your, your story. So the story may be from, uh, either part of the course, maybe around digital literacy, maybe in terms of uh, curriculum implementation in your school, either runners support program, effective uh, resource management or institutional government. So it can come from any, but you need to focus on one of them, the most significant one. Uh, and I think uh, from Kisiru, that's all for me. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, uh, Peter, for those uh, maybe remarks about um, what is expected of us uh, in terms of uh, uh, submissions of the most significant change in our story. So um, maybe I can request Peter to stop the sharing of uh, his screen. And therefore, I want to now um request that um we be ready for the closing ceremony which is coming up shortly uh we will be joined by joseph mutu as a question before we maybe I make the remarks yes joseph yes i'm asking yes joseph. where do we get these uh, these questions from after we are uh, we are through with the meeting the questions are in the community hub. Eh? Community are they hub. Appearing in the community hub. Yes. Okay. Reflective journal questions. 
What the reflective journal question and the most significant change story uh, how in the community hub? In the hub? In the community hub. Is that okay? Joseph, is it clear? From your hand, Joseph. Find it in the community hub and at the end of course survey. I think Joseph, um, you've confirmed that uh, that is where, where we submit. Have, uh, where do we submit through? Joseph, Joseph is making an inquiry of how we submit. We will still submit. Uh, maybe I can ask Aquila to guide the team on how they will submit. Uh, the reflective journal and uh, he's already started sharing the screen so that we can uh, be guided even through the hub. So let us take, uh, let us make a following of uh, what Mr. Quilla is sharing so that we clearly answer uh, the concerns of some of our, uh, our colleagues. Over to you, Aquila. Thank you, Mr. Kisindu. So the MSC form is found under the community hub. You open it. It's under the end of course survey. You see the level one satisfaction survey on. Uh, so you must complete the level one satisfaction survey. This one, this one to access the MSC form. So you must complete the end of course survey, the level one and the level uh, level two CAP survey. Those two surveys must be done so that you can be able to uh, answer the most significant change to reform. You can see it's written not available unless the activity level one satisfaction survey and level two CAP survey is marked complete. Are we together? Yes, we are. Yes. So those two surveys must be completed so that you can uh, start the most significant change store. Thank you, Mr. Pilar. Okay. Rosalia, please mute. We also said the uh, mute, please. We also said vernacular language is not uh, good Zoom etiquette. So uh, as for the first survey for the Mapweni team, only 35 are filled. So those 35 can be able to access the, the rest of the uh, surveys. So let's all fill this survey. And then we'll be able to access the most significant change form. Also the reflective journal uh, is great. It should be graded. So you must complete it to receive a certificate also. It's part of the grading. So this one is mandatory, the reflective journal. Thank you. Any question? Aquila? Yes. I want to believe in case we face challenges, we shall uh, we shall help us out. Yeah, it's okay. I'm there. Mm. Yeah. Any other question? Yes, it's for some. Any question?
So as we wait for the others to join the other counties, uh, can wait a few minutes. Yeah, you can enjoy the clips. The challenges that are mostly are found in schools, you will find that there, are, there is teacher shortage. There is also lack of infrastructure. We before in before we even OTSC send some teachers to our schools. We use the primary school teachers to teach those those learners in the junior schools. Now, when they came, still we found that they are not enough. They are not adequate to teach those those lessons or the learners. And therefore, what we, we normally we also do, you find that we have now to, to take some teachers from the primary level so that they can assist them. As we know, most of the schools right now, possibly if they have many teachers, they may only be three. Like my school, I only have three three teachers. And looking at the number of subjects that they're supposed to, to, to be taught, that is why now you have to take those teachers from the primary level so that they can assist in those in those areas. Now, when we come to, to the lack of infrastructure, like we we may not be having enough, or the, the government has not yet built up to now some, some some classes so we normally use those classes that they used previously when they were in primary so that they can they can learn from there and then we since they are in junior school we expect them to be sitting on lockers but since up to now we cannot have we don't have enough funds to buy those lockers that is why we make them use those basics that they used in the primary section when it comes to to lack of labor, laboratories that is where now we take them to the nearby nearby schools secondary schools so that they can at least learn some of those areas that need some laboratories one of the major challenge um facing is on human resource uh, like as for now i have two grades grade seven and eight with only three teachers and these teachers take specific subject so you realize that some of the subjects are not catered for most uh, one big uh, challenge is uh, understaffing which uh, we have tried to solve it by taking up qualified teachers from the primary level to take up uh, some subjects in the JSS. And uh, in terms of ICT, we tried to provide some tools, make sure they are available, even the teachers bundles, making sure we maintain those uh, tools so that they'll be able to teach efficiently. challenges that are mostly are found in schools you will find that there, are, there is teacher shortage so kind police let's let's push our our friends to join in uh, shortly we will be joined by the other counties and uh, 
the top management of the meeting here and the COK and the strategic education advisor. So colleagues, I can see from the room we are now 55, we are expecting around 60 something of us in the room. So we request that you also mobilize your colleagues to join us for the closing uh, ceremony, which will be coming up shortly. Uh, so in case you know a friend who has not joined, it would also be important that they join uh, to get the, 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 the closing remarks and the, and the, 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 the important announcements from uh, the team. So let's 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 be patient as well as we wait for our colleagues also from Busia, from Kirinyaga, and our colleagues from Nyamira to join us shortly. So let's let's be in the room. There is also lack of infrastructure. Mostly those two affect the school setup. And we before in before we even OTSC send some teachers to our schools, we use the primary school teachers to teach those those learners in the junior schools. Now when they came, still we found that they are not enough, they are not adequate to teach those those lessons or the learners. And therefore what we, we normally we also do, you find that we have now to to take some teachers from the primary level so that they can assist them. As we know, most of the schools right now, possibly if they have many teachers, they may only be three. Like my school, I only have three three teachers. And looking at the number of subjects that they're supposed to, to, to be taught, that is why now you have to take those teachers from the primary level so that they can assist in those in those areas. Now, when we come to, to the lack of infrastructure, like we, we may not be having enough, or the, the government has not yet built up to now some, some some classes so we normally use those classes that they used previously when they were in primary so that they can they can learn from there and then we since they are in junior school we expect them to be sitting on lockers but since up to now we cannot have we don't have enough funds to buy those lockers that is why we make them use those desks that they used in the primary section when it comes to to lack of labor, laboratories that is where now we take them to the nearby nearby schools secondary schools so that they can at least learn some of those areas that need some laboratories one of the major challenges um first thing is on human resource uh, like as for now I have two grades grades seven and eight with only three teachers and these teachers take specific subject so you realize that some of the subjects are not catered for most uh, one big uh, challenge is uh, understaffing which uh, we have tried to solve it by taking up qualified teachers from the primary level to take up uh, some subjects in the JSS. And uh, in terms of ICT, we try to provide some tools, make sure they are available, giving the teachers bundles, making sure we maintain those uh, tools so that they'll be able to teach efficiently. challenges that we have biasness biasness and uh, 
this one comes from me, the, the, the men, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> men look down upon women and they are very biased. You can hear that uh, two thirds of this, this, this uh, a third of this group must be women. Then you find that there is only one woman among so many men and uh, the men don't even feel whether they, are, they have done something wrong because of that biasness and looking down upon the women. Again, we have discrimination in women leadership. Women are so much discriminated. I don't know because of their nature. I don't know they are say they are lazy. They are discriminated on, on several lines. I, I don't know why. And women are equal to the task. And they can really deliver. Participants, let's uh, open up our videos. We take a group photo. Let's open up our videos. Richard Daniel Mule. Please let's open up our videos for a group photo. Lucy Muturi as well. Everyone, Jacinta Kilu. Our videos. A new smile for the photo. We are looking very serious. We need to smile for this photo. Yeah, this is a photo. So Aquila, you will alert us when you are ready to take us the photo. Emilio Julius, yes. Oh yes, I'm seen. You're seen. Oh, thank you. I'm happy. Smile. Am I seen? <laughs> Am I seen? Aquila. Yes, yes. Am I seen? Top. Tom, let me look for you. Tom Bole. Tom yes. Bole. Not you, are, you are yet to put on your video. Okay. Put on your video. Richard. Oh, I have started my video. Yeah, yeah. we can see you now, Tom. Me? Yeah, we can see you. Thank, thank you. Only that, thank you. Only that you, you need to smile for the photo. Me oh, Richard, smiling right now. That is my smile now. <laughs> <laughs> Richard. Mm. Richard, we have smelled a lot. Oh, yes, yes smell a lot. Mm. <laughs> Smelling is healthy. <laughs> Lucy, Lucy, where are you? Lucy, Lucy, you are you, you left us with the gadgets. Just why are you making face on there? Richard, what about thank you very much? And me here. Yes. Where Louis? Hey, Louis, Louis. What do you want? I open the mechana. I open the mechana. We can see. We can see all of you. Okay. Oh. Thank you. you see me? Are we through? We can see you. We can see you guys. We can see you very well. Are we done? Yeah, we are done. Yeah, we, are done with the, we are done with the photo. We are now waiting for, for the participants from the other counties to join our meeting. They had a session like ours and we are expecting them to join our room. So let's give them a few minutes uh, to join us as well. Mr. I was late. I'm using my phone. Don't wait, I'm an email. 
Yes, Joseph, what is the issue? Huh. Joseph, you, you are making an inquiry. Yeah. I was asking whether you have seen my photo. Yes, I've seen. Now, I'm, I'm even seeing you right now, Joseph. You've seen your photo. <laughs> Okay. Oh, are you seeing me? Richard. Yeah, we, yeah, Richard Nyambono, we can see you. Richard Nakwana Pia me. Thank you. Photo <laughs> session, is it over? Yeah, yeah it is. It is over. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. I wasn't taken. Yeah, you were taken. You were taken. Hmm. Hello. Yes, I can hear Hello. you. I'm asking. Yes, I can hear. Yes. Shall, shall we have a, a central point for collection of certificates? Yes, I know. Yeah, we Hello. will uh, send. We will send the certificates to the um, to the CDs. Yes. Eh? So yes. you will collect them from the CDs office. We thought we would have a, a central point of meeting you, you guys once more. You, 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 you are yearning to meet us once more. <laughs> yes, yes. Is yes. it my hand has been up? Oh, yeah, Lois. <laughs> Lois, uh, yes, ask the question, Lois. Yes, I, 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 I'm just asking, are we going to get any, any airtime allowance? We used to give you allowance for transport, mm -hmm. but now you have not traveled anywhere. You are just like me, I have not traveled. <laughs> just <in the> allowance. <laughs> yeah. So, the, 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 no, no, no. We just requested that you have bundles. Now, for this session, we remember last time, even for the bundles that we were using, we were not reimbursing the bundles, but rather we reimbursed transport, which was good. Uh, and uh, we made you feel comfortable, uh, and uh, which you also appreciated. So, from how this program has been uh, tailored, uh, court two, you are actually going through two face to face and um, one uh, online. So, others, our colleagues have joined us. So, let's now prepare for the other uh, ceremony, which is upcoming shortly. It will be difficult to be in leadership positions. It will be up to this position will be taken up by women. So it's a matter of time. Yes. to go and take because they believe they'll be separated from family or something like that so they are shying away from taking leadership roles.
training is very important at this level because we are getting a lot of information that we are not sure of and that has come at the right time because it's going to make us uh, better, more effective leaders than we were before. And uh, because of the new technology that's coming in, we uh, believe you're going to get to be stronger and be able to monitor uh, the, the curriculum implementation well in our institutions. I appreciate the organizers came in UOB. It's a very wonderful training. It will help me as a leader to become an efficient leader. Because from here I'll go and cascade to what I have learned. To, to my first of all to my teachers and also to my fellow head teachers in my zone. So to me it is a wonderful training. The approach of app based is okay because we are living in a technology world. We cannot train from technology. So one thing I like because we are being trained how to use these apps. So it is for us to embrace it. And to me, I see it is a wonderful one because we have to embrace technology, whether you like it or not. We are living in the world of technology. So Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we want to welcome all of us to the closing ceremony. And um, uh, I want to announce that uh, we've been joined by, uh, we have four counties. Uh, uh, we have Makweni, we have Busia, Kirinyaga, and Nyamira. And therefore, we will start our a program today with a word of prayer. So I want to request Sister Philomon Momani from Nagina Girls Boarding to start our meeting with a word of prayer. Philomon. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. God, our loving Father, our Creator and our God, here we are, Lord, to begin our closing ceremony. We want to thank you and praise you for your goodness. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be here. We thank you for having guided us throughout this training. We are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity you gave us to train. And we pray now that you may come down and be present with us. We pray that you may guide us in the meeting. Lord, give us the knowledge that we require. Give us the protection that we require. Let us feel and experience your love and presence in this meeting. And Lord, give us the courage to put into practice all that we shall gather here and what we have gathered even before. We love you and we praise you and we glorify your holy name because you are great and because you are powerful and you are with us. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So thank you, Sister Philemon, for that opening prayer. And now we shortly uh, start our ceremony with introductions. I will request um, that um, when I mention your county, you will put on your videos and uh, uh, wave at our gates. So we will start with the host county. Uh, this is Makweni. Kindly put on your cameras and wave at our gates this evening. Put on our cameras and let's wave to our gates. 
uh, participants from Akweni, thank you very much. Uh, participants from Busia, put on your cameras and wave to our guests. Busia. Participants from Busia. Thank you, Busia. Thank you, Busia, for being in the house. Kirinyaga. Participants from Kirinyaga. Kindly put on your cameras and wave at our guests this evening. Thank you, Hester. Thank you. Um, then participants from Nyamira. Participants from Nyamira in the house, kindly. Thank you very much. Good evening and thank you very much. So thank you very much for uh, being on board. Um, I would like us to go into um, a session where we shall be making some short speeches. And we would like to invite Dr. Omwanza to speak on behalf of the training team, the facilitating team from Kenya Education Management Institute. So over to you, Dr. Omwanza. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kisilo. Uh, the CEO Kemi, Dr. Morris Odondo, the Deputy Director, Mr. Wycliffe Waseke, the Global Education Advisor, the CD is present, the HOD is present from Kemi, trainers, and also our participants. Good uh, afternoon. First and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation as uh, the trainers from Kemi. Uh, we want to appreciate one uh, is Kemi, together with our partner VVOB, and also the participants who are uh, coming from the four counties of uh, Nyamira, Busia, uh, Krinyag. Hello, thank you, thank you, thank you. Allow me, I was speaking, but I did not unmute, sorry for that. I began by uh, saying that to the CEO Kemi, Dr. Maurice Odondo, the Deputy Director in charge of training, uh, Mr. Wycliffe Wasike, uh, the CD is present, uh, the HOD is from Kemi, the trainers, and also our participants, good afternoon. First and foremost, allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of the facilitators from Kemi to begin by appreciating the Almighty God for giving us uh, an opportunity to come this far. Secondly, to appreciate Kemi and appreciate VVOB and appreciate also uh, the Minister of Education and all other stakeholders who have been uh, involved in this cohort too of uh, the increase program that was taking place in uh, the eight counties. And today we are gathering as four counties of Kirinyaga, the county of Busia, the county of Nyamira, and the county of Makweni. Uh, uh, even as we close uh, uh, the training that has taken place through uh, uh, a two face-to-face -face meeting and now today, the online meetings that uh, we were able to interact. I want to say that uh, uh, as we are all aware is that uh, uh, the main goal of this program was basically to empower our school leaders, uh, most, mostly in the junior school level with uh, robust instructional leadership skills. And uh, uh, I can report uh, uh, confidently on behalf of the trainers that uh, we have noted a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, improvement in the way in which our schools are being managed, especially the people who are involved in this course. So I want to congratulate the participants so far for coming this far and completing this course successfully. Congratulations so much! And also, I want uh, to also uh, uh, appreciate that uh, wherever we went among the four counties here, the experience was the same the cooperation among our participants was so, so much. And uh, as trainers, we were so happy with you. And we pray 
that uh, what you have learned here may it be reflected in terms of uh, uh, how you practice your leadership skills. We want to see a strengthened leadership skills in you. We want to ski, see school, school that uh, are establishing maybe internal uh, school-based uh, CPD support to other colleagues. We want to see schools that are making the decisions based on evidences uh, uh, that uh, are well informed by uh, the uh, topics and uh, the units that we have learned throughout this session. Otherwise, without uh, saying so much, I want to say on behalf of the trainers from KEMI that we are happy that we have come to this far and we pray that uh, in your future endeavors, you will be able to take your schools to the next level for the glory and for the benefit of the Kenyan child. God bless us all and thank you, thank you, and thank you. Over to you, Mr. Kisilu. Thank you very much, Dr. Mwanza, for those remarks. I want to welcome RISPA uh, from uh, VVOB to make uh, remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kisilu. Um, the CEO, Kenya Education Management Institute, Dr. Morris, the Deputy Director, Management Development Department, uh, Kemi, Mr. Wasike, the County Directors of Education from uh, Makweni, Nyamira, Busi, and Kirinyaga counties, the Global Strategic Education Advisor from uh, VVOB Head Office, um, Madam Inke, and the Kenya Management Institute subject matter experts, the ICT colleagues and the VVOB Kenya colleagues in the house. Good evening. Um, Good evening. It is with great pleasure that we meet today as we mark the successful conclusion of this online synchronous session under the effective leadership for junior school course for cohort two. Um, on behalf of VVOB, I extend our deepest gratitude to the Kenya Education Management Institute, the Ministry of Education, the County Directors of Education, and all the school leaders who took part in this course and are present here today. Over the past few months, uh, this program has demonstrated the power of collaboration in shaping the future of education in Kenya. The goal of this course has been to empower you uh, with instructional leadership competencies and strategies, uh, which is um, going to play a central part to transform our junior schools through professional development that you as school leaders need to effectively implement the competency-based curriculum in the country. So we have seen great, great strides in this journey through your dedication, the school leaders, whether during the in-person session or in this blended learning environment that we have conducted over the past two weekends, the reflective practices, the case studies that uh, we have been engaging in, and um, the collaborative efforts you engaged in will no doubt have a lasting impact on your schools, teachers and learners all together, your hard work and determination to embrace uh, modern educational strategies is truly commendable. We have made a great journey in embracing technology in our learning institutions and also building the capacity of the school, uh, of the school leaders and teachers that we have in our institutions. As we wrap up today, I would like to emphasize the importance of putting the knowledge and the skills gained into practice. Your role as a change maker in your school is very crucial, and we are proud to have supported you in this capacity building journey. Once again, we thank Kenya Education Management Institute for their leadership in this program, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration to ensure that every learner has access to quality education and these capacity building initiatives um, will go beyond the eight counties that we have engaged in this cohort too, as we look forward to more capacity building efforts in the future. Thank you very much and all the best in the journey of putting the skills gained into practice. Asante sana. Thank you very much, um, Arispa, for those remarks on behalf of our partner VVOB. And now I would like to 
invite our deputy director in charge of training, Mr. Wycliffe Wasike, to take over the program. So Mr. Wasike, kindly uh, take over the program, invite the CDs present in the house to make the remarks. And uh, after that, you invite the good, good global afternoon. strategic education advisor. Good afternoon, everybody. And then the CEO KB to make his remarks. Um, thank you so much, uh, um, Martin, for leading us this far. Thank you so much, colleagues, for the remarks that you have given. Uh, for me, it gives me a lot of pleasure to see all these uh, teachers, uh, head teachers that have participated in this program, especially seeing your commitment, seeing your focus uh, into this program. I am excited because I know that they get the knowledge that we have gained in this will go all along to benefit the Kenyan child in this country. Because anytime we have good practice, at the end of the day, the child benefits through improved learner outcomes. So I am very glad. I want to thank the team of uh, facilitators from uh, EMI and the support that we have received from VVOB to ensure this program comes to this uh, fruition. We are looking forward that in this program, we will uh, do a follow-up uh, in our schools just to see what you are doing and to share with you the best practices that you are uh, imp implementing in the school uh, arising from this uh, engagement that we have had. Otherwise, I want to really thank you all for the good work that you have done. I want to thank all the facilitators for the good work that uh, has uh, been done. I can see very many people responding and writing that the course was very good. Um, others, uh, Nzioka is saying, uh, let's go and spread the gospel. I can see weekly from Busia saying the, goals, the, the course was very good. I can see Walter uh, Ombati uh, saying uh, uh, hi to all of us. So thank you so much for this great work. I want to go straight uh, to invite the CEO, our CEO. Um, I want to invite the, uh, before I invite the CEO, I want to invite the CDs present. Um, CD, Busia, are you present? Uh, Akale, are you in? Kale, Director uh, Busia. Present. Bona I cannot see you. That. Thank it's you present. so much. Um, the yeah. CEO. Kale, yeah, Kale. Kale, easy, I can see you. Uh, yeah. Director Busia, I kindly give you a comments. You have your participants from Busia on board. Please give your comments. Uh, thank you. Welcome so much, uh, Director. Thank you. Thank you, my brother, Basike, the CEO Kemi, uh, Mr. Kisilo, uh, our partners from VOB, and my colleague, County Directors of Education, Kirinyaga, Nyamira, and Makwini, and um, all the participants. Good evening. Good evening once more. Good evening. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I want to sincerely thank all of us for the journey we've gone together in supporting the increase program, which I'm sure has equipped principals of junior schools with the best management practices. Since the course started, I've had an opportunity to interact with the um, principals, especially of my county. And what I've noticed is the increase program has enabled teachers to interact more effectively and actively with the learning resources 
in the junior school. And this is good because it makes learning and teaching more effective and, and, and supports learners. Secondly, with the increased program, teachers are now able to interact with the ICT. They are literate in matters of ICT. They can use computers, they can share information. You know, they can use uh, the projector and all other ICT equipment to be able to teach in their schools and to really support uh, teachers in the school environment. Um, the increased program is also has also been important and very effective in making the science concepts especially to be more relevant and more practical, especially to the teachers and the principals. This we continue nurturing our junior schools. Uh, more importantly, uh, the increased program is making management by teachers more effective and efficient because as of now they are able to hold um, virtual meetings. Teachers can attend meetings while out of school, while in their offices, instead of gathering in the same place. This is a very good step. As managers in education, we are also pleased with the fact that the increased program through the preparation of the strategic plans. So I want to encourage principals um, as they partner with other uh, organizations, other partners like the national, uh, the national government, constituency uh, development fund, the county governments, non-governmental organizations like UNICEF, they should be able to use the roadmaps in the name of strategic plans to actually develop their schools in all aspects, in the academics, in fiscal infrastructure, in co-curricular activities and all this. And this is why I want to say um, the increased program has been a plus on our teachers. More importantly, I also want to say that um, as of now, our, our principals are able to offer so, uh, psychosocial support to our learners and teachers in the school environment. And this is good because we have a number of challenges, uh, both teachers and students, in most cases, experience challenges and hardships that really need people to come on board and support them. Otherwise, I want to sincerely congratulate all our participants, our principals, for having uh, taken their time, their resources to attend and complete this training. Thank you so much, Kemi. Thank you so much for, for all this uh, support. Asanteni. Thank you so much, uh, Director. Thank you for those uh, good remarks. I can see you are team from Busia. I'm happy giving you a clap and uh, congratulating themselves for the work done. I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, uh, Director Kirinyaga. Our Director, Director Kirinyaga County. Are you in? What is the question? Okay. Um, if uh, you are not in, uh, Director Nyamira. Director Nyamira? Do we have Director Nyamira in the house? I, th I think uh, Director Nyamira is not in the house, Mr. Asike, but uh, mm -hmm. Director Makuene had confirmed attendance. And no problem. I wanted to find out uh, Grinyaga and Nyamira. Um, you know, uh, Director McQueeny is the host. <laughs> He's the host of this closing function. So is Kirinyaga in and Yamira? If we are not there, then uh, Director McQueeny? Director McQueeny? Is he in? Oh, 
or his representative. Uh, and a representative from uh, Amakwene representing the CD because he had confirmed to attending this meeting. Okay, fine. Thank you. I think we can proceed. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, to welcome uh, Madam Inge, the Global Education Advisor VVOB, who has traveled all the way from Brazil to join us, uh, Brazil to join us uh, in this closing uh, function. Uh, Madam Inge, please uh, welcome. Okay, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here today for also addressing a word to all of you. Dear managers of KEMI, dear county directors, dear KEMI trainers, dear VVOB colleagues, esteemed school leaders, Today marks a significant moment as we gather online to close your blended learning trajectory for effective school leadership for junior schools. When you started your training in April, we urged you to take the training seriously, even as you developed additional skills to help you implement competency-based curriculum. You're now in the final stretch of your course and you have been equipped to create and improve the conditions for effective teaching and learning in your school. We hope that this training, splendid training, has marked a different learning experience for you and will help you to make a difference in your respective schools. This pilot in eight counties targeting 470 school leaders would not have been possible without our valuable partner, Amy. We want to thank you for your support, contribution to this pilot of a blended learning journey, including two face-to-face -face sessions, self-paced learning, and today's final online synchronous sessions. As school leaders, it is now your responsibility to translate a blended learning trajectory into concrete and sustainable school-based initiatives to support your teachers in junior school in effective implementation of the CBC. We are counting on you. We trust you'll be doing a good job and the journey has just begun. As VVOB, we'll remain in the background and available to receive any suggestions, comments on your individual journeys and please don't hesitate to share what we can improve. Wishing you all the best in your leadership journey. Asante Sana. Thank you. I think we can do and well, uh, um, yeah, we can do an appreciation to the chat. You are uh, Madame uh, Inga Plana, give some remarks. Uh, uh, yeah, so we, we can, can uh, do uh, an appreciation to Madame Inge using our chat box. Uh, uh, please, please do. I can see them coming. Asante Sana, thank you so much. I can see some clap. Uh, bravo, Madame. Uh, uh, all of them are coming. Thank, thank you, you, wonderful Madam Inke. Uh, uh, all this uh, to you. Thanks, Thanks Madam. Madam. Madam, Madam Inke, thank you so much. You have enough clubs and uh, enough thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to come to the close of this, uh, uh, this uh, function. And uh, we have our CEO uh, in the house together with us. It is my good pleasure, therefore, to invite our uh, the Kenya Education Management Institute CEO, uh, Dr. Maurice Odondo. Dr. Tari, welcome and make your closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Weekly. Today, I'm uh, highly elated because it's a special day for us as we close uh, the workshop for this uh, great cohort. Why is it special to me? We are visited by uh, VUB Global Education Advisor, Madame Inge. And Madame Inge, uh, for me, is very special in this uh, uh, important undertaking. The journey of VUB 
started off with Madam Inge when the government of Kenya worked closely with Brussels to have this uh, project approved in this country. So I'm glad to have Madam Inge today as we close for this uh, very, very good cohort and it's a special honor for the cohort to uh, witness this uh, very good closing today. Ladies and gentlemen, having mentioned that, I wish to not recognize uh, Madam Inge's presence here. I wish to recognize the CD's presence and uh, the team from KME, the team from VVB, equally the team from uh, the fields who have been supporting us in very many special ways. And finally, the great people for whose purpose we are here today, that is the good school uh, leaders who are supporting our children across the country. I wish to welcome you to this uh, closing ceremony and wish you the very best as we deliberate on these important matters on improving school leadership across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, all that we have embarked on from the beginning of this uh, uh, program at the, this cohort level to the day to day we are closing this program, I wish to indicate that uh, we have been able to prepare ourselves for the present and the future needs of our country. And most importantly, by providing the best for our education sector. In the same space, I wish to appreciate that uh, we may have the best curriculum in the space. We may have the best resources, the best materials to apply. But if you don't have high quality school leaders, all are in vain. And that's why I wish to reiterate that uh, we have witnessed the level in which you are interacting in this program from the initial stage up to now. And so far as we work towards closing this very cohort programs, we appreciate that you recognize the centrality of uh, school leadership in this country. But what are the augmenting points when it comes to centrality of uh, school leadership? School leadership in itself cannot just be looked into the purview of uh, uh, general school operations. It goes beyond school operations. The school leadership really focuses on inspiring and guiding the teachers, guiding the students on how to achieve their full potential. It equally uh, focuses on setting high expectations for ourselves and for our learners so as to achieve the desired national goals of our education as a country. And I therefore wish to indicate that I have witnessed all this during your discussions, during your presentations, and with recognition, I note that you have taken a different pathway in matters improving learning outcomes in our schools. I, I, I wish to indicate that uh, I have noted in your discussions that we, at this point, as we close, we have enhanced our strategic planning and vision setting for our institutions of learning. We have equally been able to improve our instructional leadership practices because instructions are the heart of education. Where instructions will give us poor output. The adage, garbage in, garbage out. But so far, considering the work we have had together, I believe, and we have shared, discussed together, that we indeed are operating at another level that will steer our learners to a better future. Mm -hmm. I also wish to uh, concur that uh, considering the discussions that we have had together, you have able to build a positive school culture, a culture which will enable our learners to remain in school, which enable our learners to participate, and of course engage with every other player to make them better citizens, and more so to the level of global citizenship. So they are clear and uh, seamless operations within the global space. I also always to appreciate the fact that uh, you have been able to engage in matters school community linkages. Your discussions, the mode of operations with the community is quite inspiring. It indicates to us that uh, we are prepared. The team has actually worked together and they are not the same again. But what does it speak to us? It speaks to us that uh, we are co-creators. We are co-creators with God. God gives us the creation and we nurture the creation. And working together with your colleagues, collaborating with your colleagues in all matters of co-creating, we trust and believe that we'll be able to deliver 
the desire of this country. And most importantly, on the same level, I have witnessed an aspect of behavior change because that's a hallmark of everything. With a positive behavior change, we are able now to actually apply all, all the key aspects of school leadership and transform our space to the betterment of our children. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I wish to appreciate the Ministry of Education for working with us this far. The leadership has supported this important project and they have made us succeed. Now we have the account directors of education on board. We have other officers on board. We have been able to work together in this undertaking to deliver the desires of the ministry. Also wish to appreciate the VOB leadership from Brussels and within the country. We have uh, worked together collectively, sharing, discussing, and delivering that which is desired for the Kenyan child. I wish also to recognize the presence of uh, our KEMI team. KEMI team has given their best. KEMI management has done that they should, what they should do. The training team and all other staff who are supporting this, the ICT team, they have made us proud because we are building school leaders at another level. Remember that the program we are closing today is a nap based program. It's a nap based, it's a, it's a unique program, a program with its own kind. Our app is anchored in the Google study. It's not there in the country. That is how special uh, the Institute is in matters school leadership. It's a unique app uh, which enables us to have a gateway into the LMS for us to appreciate and enjoy the best practices that are embedded in our program. So, ladies and gentlemen, a call to action for all of us. As you conclude this course, I wish to leave you with a call to action. The journey, the journey to effective school leadership does not end here today. It is a continuous process of learning, growth, and improvement. Thank you very much, and may God bless you as we close uh, this important workshop. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to officially close uh, this uh, uh, workshop for the cohort to uh, team. You may proceed with your other programs to finally conclude your program in style. Thank you and thank you, thank you so much, uh, CEO, for your uh, um, comments. Thank you so much for the encouragement and the challenge that you have given to us. Indeed, this is the beginning of the journey. Once we have got the skills, the next thing is for us to go out there and uh, put them into practice. I wish to invite uh, one of the last presidents uh, from uh, Makweni. Last president for me. I'm waiting. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Before the president from McQueen comes in, let's let's give a clap to our CEO. Give a thumbs up. Things are Mr. coming. Tike, I can we, see very we, many we, coming. We, thank you very much. We can put on our cameras and appreciate. A clap from Yunis Guire from Wambua. A clap. Let's say CEO. Very many thumbs up. Yes. Thanks, CEO Madenge. Thank you for your clap. Thank you, Jaris Mudama. Yes, Rose Abai, uh, Flo, Flois, uh, Priska Webuye, Evelyn. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks a lot, CEO Jeremiah Nakafua. Thank you, Dr. Daktari. I think that's good. We are happy for the, with the, the thank you remarks that you have given and the thumbs up. Uh, Geoffrey Munga, you are saying hapo sana. Uh, Stephen Keroga is saying, Ken has done it. Yes, we have done it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. God bless. Susan Siokaya is saying, Masante Sifna. Uh, now, I wish to invite the uh, president uh, of uh, Makweni, uh, the class president from Makweni. Are you in? Are you in? Yes, he's in. Yeah, 
Mr. I President, please give a, give a vote of thanks. Martin, are you hearing me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. All protocols. Although you are, you are, you are, your volume is very low, very low. Maybe you can Thank speak you a little bit much. louder. On behalf of all the participants and all the protocols, that I thank and appreciate each one of you, all of us, for the various and different roles that play for the success of this program. I first of all thank the partners in your group for administering this program. I want to explain that on behalf of my colleagues, I have made a difference in our career lines. And it shall not be the same. I want to thank him for the He has been the best. And in particular, our trainers, Martin Union, the children, the team from the other counties, Lucia, Namira, Nadia, also in the Ministry of Education through the county directors, what he said was not to give another opportunity to go number two in leading uh, from that form. I want to thank the colleague participants for having taken all the time, bearing in mind that the people are normally very busy, but we have allowed ourselves to take part. Thanks a lot. I want to challenge all of us as participants and ensure that we stand out of the crowd as far as the people to be concerned. God bless us all from the clever point. Thank you very much for your money. Thank you so much, uh, Bana Kisilu, Eliud Kisilu, the president yeah. of. Uh, Makweni County for the vote of thanks. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wish to say that we have come to the end of this closing ceremony. Uh, maybe I can ask uh, Madam Rebecca, are you in? So, Fike, we have uh, a closing prayer from Florence Kenya of Kirinyaga County. Okay, okay, that is the person I was uh, actually looking for. Florence from Kirinyaga, are you ready? Florence Kenya from Kirinyaga. Florence Kija. Martin, Florence is not in. Okay, we could uh, have our closing prayer from Madam Rebecca Kemi. Okay, let's yeah. believe and pray. Everlasting, yeah. everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for the care you Yes, let's pray. Everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before your presence this evening. We want to thank you for the gift of life, for the care you've taken unto each one of us. Thank you for Chemi. Thank you for the CEO. Thank you for the trainers. You have enabled us, Lord, to deliver the content. We thank you for our partners, VOB, the global uh, the, the, the global manager, and even the other uh, colleagues, we want to thank you for them. We pray that you may continue being with us and even strengthening the partnership. We pray that uh, you may help us also to deliver other programs for the benefit of the child of Kenya. We pray that, Lord, you may also continue blessing us in many other ways. Thank you for the participants. We pray that you may enable them to apply whatever they have learned. And uh, we pray that uh, the the child of Kenya will benefit from whatever they have learned. Thank you, Rod, even as we break, we pray that you may continue being with us. 
in the, uh, other engagements that we are going to be in. And uh, we also pray for the animals for those who will be traveling. We thank you and we honor your name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Rebecca, for the prayer. Uh, I just wish to announce that, uh, remember, uh, at the end of this program, once you have submitted in your reflective journals, you will be issued with a certificate for this course from Kenya Education Management Institute. So uh, immediately you hand over your uh, reflective journal and it is graded then you will be given your certificate uh, in that respect. Otherwise, thank you so much. I want to wish you well, wish you a good evening, and I wish you good practice as you return to your schools tomorrow. Thank you very much. So, we can unmute and uh, put on our cameras. Please put on your cameras. And say just bye. say jumbo, whatever, and just do a bye bye. A bye bye. Uh, put on your cameras, bye. all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Santeni Sana, yeah, thank you yeah. very much. And thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay, have a nice time. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Let me see. Was everybody muted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.